With the SAT coming up, a lot of people have asked me about this exact type of question. I found this cool video going over an example. The tricky thing here is we want to get X alone. So when we're done, we should have X equal something. The thing people struggle with is how do we get X alone when there's two X's? So let's watch the video and see how it's done. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says solve for X. It's 2X over 3 pi plus the quantity 1 minus X over 2 equals 0. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. First thing, I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of these denominators. And we're going to do that by multiplying everything by the least common denominator. In this case, between 3 pi and 2, 6 pi is the least common denominator. So we're going to multiply everything by 6 pi. For this first term, 6 pi times 2x is 12 pi x, and it's still going to be divided by 3 pi. And then for this part, the 6 pi is going to distribute to both of these. So we're going to have two separate fractions divided by 2. For the first one, 6 pi times 1 is equal to 6 pi. And then we're going to subtract, and 6 pi times x is 6 pi x. And on the right-hand side, 0 times 6 pi is still 0. Now we can simplify things to get rid of the denominators. For this first term, the 2 pi's will divide each other out. And 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. For this term, 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3, and for this term, 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. Now we have 4x plus 3 pi minus 3 pi x equals 0. Since we're trying to solve for x, we want all the terms that contain x on one side and all the terms that do not contain x on the other side. So we want to move this 3 pi over to the other side, and we can do that by subtracting 3 pi from both sides. We can copy this down and simplify. 3 pi minus 3 pi will go to 0. And 0 minus 3 pi is negative 3 pi. Now on the left-hand side, every term contains an x. Let's factor out that x. When we factor an x out of 4x, we're left with 4. And then we can bring down the subtraction. And when we factor an x out of 3 pi x, we're left with 3 pi. And we're still equal to negative 3 pi. Now to get x by itself, we can divide both sides by 4 minus 3 pi. And let's copy this step down and simplify it. On the left-hand side, the 4 minus 3 pi on top and bottom will divide each other out. We're left with x is equal to negative 3 pi over 4 minus 3 pi. This is probably fine as an answer, but you can still kind of simplify it. On top, we can factor out a negative 1. So instead of negative 3 pi, we have negative 1 times 3 pi. And on bottom, we can also factor out a negative 1. So negative 1 times what gives us 4? Well, that's negative 4. And then negative 1 times what gives us negative 3 pi? Well, that's positive 3 pi. Now, this might look even more complicated, but these two negative ones will divide each other out. And now we can get rid of these parentheses and rearrange it like this. So I don't know which one do you prefer, negative 3 pi over 4 minus 3 pi or 3 pi over 3 pi minus 4? I think this one looks a little bit neater. Let's put a box around it. The question asks us to solve for x, so this is the answer to our question. How exciting.